Welcome back to GDT Tech Reviews. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 best gaming phones 2022. So let us get started and the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. OnePlus hasn't gone too crazy with the design of the OnePlus 9 Pro, which can be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you see it. I don't really mind it. The core shape and dimensions make this phone similar to the OnePlus 8 Pro, however the 9 Pro is slightly thicker at 8.7mm and a bit lighter, 197 grams. It has an aluminium frame, and Gorilla Glass on the curved front and back. It looks and feels premium, but I'd recommend the pine green or stellar black colors which have matte finishes, versus the mirror gloss finish of the morning mist trim that I have. The OnePlus 9 Pro is a tall smartphone but I quickly got used to the placement of the volume and power buttons. Tactile feedback is good and the alert slider works as expected. There's no headphone jack but the dual SIM tray, USB Type-C port, USB 3.1 Gen 1, and bottom firing speaker are in the same positions as they are on the 8 Pro. The OnePlus 9 Pro keeps the IP68 dust and water resistance rating of its predecessor but gets an upgraded 50 watts, up from 30 watts, wireless charging system. More on this later. OnePlus has switched to an LTPO OLED display for the OnePlus 9 Pro, which the company claims cuts power consumption by up to 50% compared to the previous model. It's a 6.7-inch display with a QHD Plus resolution, 120Hz refresh rate, and HDR10 Plus certification. The Red Magic 5G is a chunky phone. It has a big, bright 6.65-inch AMOLED display and a deep body to accommodate all the internals, making it heavier than most handsets. The sides of the phone are busy, with two shoulder buttons on the right-hand side alongside a power button, volume rocker, and one of the fan vents. On the left edge, you have the other fan vent, a port for a docking station, and a toggle switch for game space, which is Nubia's dedicated game launcher. On the bottom, you get one of its speakers, the SIM tray, and a USB-C charging port, while the top of the phone has a welcome headphone jack. The second speaker sits at the top of the screen. The Red Magic 5G's most unique feature is its 144Hz refresh rate display, the first ever in a smartphone. The previous high was 120Hz, seen on phones such as the Razer Phone 2 and the OnePlus 8 Pro. A higher refresh rate means the screen updates more often, which should lead to a smoother picture. The design of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus is where we see the most obvious differences compared to last year's S20 Plus, the S21 Plus, along with the standard S21 and the S21 Ultra, has been given a radically new design language. The screen is a 6.7-inch AMOLED display, and it's completely flat, so you're not getting curved edges at the left and right of the display, as on previous models. Some may miss from a design perspective, but we're not sure that many people will notice or mind, and doing away with curved edges on screens can mean fewer accidental presses. The back of the handset is clad in glass, something that gives the Plus model a slightly more premium feel than the standard S21, the back of which is clad in a glass-slash-plastic hybrid that Samsung imaginatively calls Glastic. As on that phone, though, it's a matte finish, which gives the phone a sober, sophisticated look and feel. How important is the screen resolution on a smartphone? We raise the question because, somewhat controversially, Samsung has dropped the resolution of the S21 to Full HD+, down from the QHD+, resolution from last year's S20+. Google Pixel 6 Pro Mobile was launched on 19th of October 2021. The phone comes with a 6.70-inch touchscreen display with a resolution of 1440 by 3120 pixels at a pixel density of 512 pixels per inch, p, and an aspect ratio of 19.5 to 9. 
Google Pixel 6 Pro is powered by a 2.8 GHz octa-core Google Tensor processor that features two cores clocked at 2.8 GHz and two cores clocked at 2.25 GHz. It comes with 12 GB of RAM. The Google Pixel 6 Pro runs Android 12 and is powered by a 5,003 mAh battery. The Google Pixel 6 Pro supports wireless charging, as well as proprietary fast charging. As far as the cameras are concerned, the Google Pixel 6 Pro on the rear packs a triple camera setup featuring a 50 megapixel primary camera with an f/1.85 aperture and a pixel size of 1.2 micron, a 12 megapixel camera with an f/2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.25 micron, and a 48 megapixel camera with an f/3.5 aperture and a pixel size of 0.8 micron. The rear camera setup has autofocus. It has a single front camera setup for selfies, featuring a 11.1 megapixel sensor with an f/2.2 aperture and a pixel size of 1.22 micron. Google Pixel 6 Pro is based on Android 12 and packs 128 gigabytes of inbuilt storage. The Google Pixel 6 Pro is a dual SIM, GSM and GSM, mobile that accepts nano SIM and SIM cards. The Google Pixel 6 Pro measures 163.90 by 75.90 by 8.90 mm, height x width x thickness, and weighs 210.00 grams. It was launched in cloudy white, sorta of sunny, and stormy black colors. Sensors on the phone include accelerometer, ambient light sensor, barometer, compass slash magnetometer, gyroscope, in display fingerprint sensor, proximity sensor, and fingerprint sensor. The Asus ROG Phone 5 has a largely similar design as its predecessor, the ROG 3, a black rectangle, or white, if you get the ultimate version, with the buttons and ports in the same places. There are several improvements, of course, for instance, the back cover's RGB lit ROG icon is now filtered through blocks that make it look 8-bit, but most are less noticeable. There's a volume button rocker above a power button on the right side, with capacitive touch buttons on the extreme top and bottom edges of the right side that act as shoulder buttons. On the left side is the USB-C port that's been in the ROG series since its inception, but this time around, instead of another cable port there's a capacitive strip to connect to accessories. And since that's shallower than a port, it makes the rubber plug, to keep out dust and sand, easier to pop out. That's symbolic of the ROG 5 small but noticeable quality of life improvements. The 6.78 inch display is slightly larger than the ROG 3's thanks to smaller top and bottom bezels, more responsive shoulder buttons than in the ROG 3, and of course, the 3.5mm headphone jack. Don't expect improved materials, though, the back cover is still plastic, with a bit of a cheaper feel than glass that we'd hold against Asus if this wasn't a growing trend in flagship phones to cut costs. We see you, Samsung Galaxy S21. A bigger change is the back cover's design. Gone is the ROG 3's cutout window into the heat sink. There's still a ROG logo on the standard ROG 5, albeit with a blocky filter that makes it look retro 8-bit, that lights up in programmable patterns, much like gamer chic light-up components inside a PC desktop build. In the Pro and Ultimate versions, the logo is swapped for a small, about 1-inch OLED panel which can display a symbol or message of your choice. While RGB and OLED panels certainly scream gamer aesthetic, they're a far cry from the first ROG phone which had such deep grooves zigzagging across the back cover it looked like an incognito Decepticon. These flourishes were tamed over the ROG phone generations, and the minimal lines seen today are the culmination of a more mainstream look, with a geometric but rounded camera block at the top of the back cover.